What's going on YouTube man? It's your boy legit now look this builder in 2k24 is way harder man So it's mandatory you don't mess up because they're expensive They cost a lot of money and junk like that So Joe knows dropped the video 10 mistakes to avoid when creating your building NBA 2k24 Let's see cuz I'm not messing up this year man We all know making builds are very at the start by the way, by the way before, before we start at the start of 2k23 next gen I made an inside center and burnt like $50 bro when, when poppers were obviously the meta, like I'm so dumb. Got 10 tips to help you avoid making mistakes on your first builds in NBA 2K24. If any of these help you out, make sure you drop a like on the video. Let's get into it. The first tip I have is be absolutely sure your build meets the requirements for the animations that you want. All right, I can't, I can't stress this enough. There's nothing worse than making a guard build and then finding out you don't get the dribble animations you want, or making Facts. a slasher and finding out you don't meet the criteria for the contact dunks or the certain NBA player dunk package that you wanted or, or you guys get what I'm saying make sure you check out those animation requirements now they're gonna be posted online eventually but let's say you get the game immediately when it first comes out you can create a 60 overall player go into the game and actually search through the animation store and find out okay I want to make a slasher I need at least a 92 driving dunk and an 85 vertical or whatever the animation thresholds are you can go in and find out exactly what it is same thing with the guard you could go in and find out what dribble style what behind the back what crossover you think you're going to want to use and make sure you meet the ball handle and the speed with ball requirements to get the animations you want otherwise you're gonna like a lot of people mess up with this in 2k i blame y'all for doing this junk bro why don't you let us know the uh thresholds like before the game comes out, bro, you have to sit here and make a burner build, make a burner build just to find them out. Or 2K can't drop it. Like I don't know why they wait so late, bro. Or at least put it in the builder. Put like on the right side right here how they have these navigate uh, relevant all badges and the tiers. Like put that. Like oh yeah, if you upgrade this even higher, you'll be able to unlock LeBron James dunk package. What's so hard about that, 2K? Why are y'all so lazy? VC into a build and then not even be Damn. able to use the animations that you want you're gonna end up having to remake the build now you've paid twice the amount of money for one build make sure you get those animations that you want before you invest all that VC into the build number two it kind of piggybacks off the first one but it's basically high risk versus low risk build and what I mean by that is a lot of people will make multiple builds in a year you know you might have your guard build your center build your lockdown build you know two three builds however many builds you decide to make let's say you plan on making two builds a guard build and a center build i recommend you start with the center build to start the game because it is a low risk build and what i mean by that is a center a build point. is a lot easier to create and not mess up is what i mean so a center build you don't essentially have to worry about dribble animations you don't have to worry about as many shooting and dunking animations in, in terms of what your build is able to unlock right on a center the big thing you want to have is the correct attribute spread you know it might end up being a mistake in terms of like let's say you went hall of fame rebound chaser and it turns out well gold is basically just the same as hall of fame you know we find out little things like that throughout the year but your build is still viable but if you make your guard build and it turns out well you went 90 ball handle but all the best animations that people find are at 95 ball handle well now your guard build is basically trash and you got to remake it you won't have that on a low risk build like a center or a low risk build like a lockdown where animation thresholds are not that big of a deal all you got to do is make sure you have the right attributes and well if everybody locks in centers where the guards gonna be at man get the badges that you want and your build will be set for the year obviously we will find out little nuances on lockdowns and center builds throughout the year but again your build will still be playable it won't be like your lockdown build is completely trash it might be a little outdated you know six months into the game but you can still get the job done the problem with the guard builds they're high risk builds right we don't know the best dribble animations when the game first comes out you can look at the the, the requirements all you want but we don't know what works and what doesn't we don't know if gold speed booster is trash and you need hall of fame or we don't know if gold speed booster is the same as hall of fame you know so those things yeah. in terms of guard builds are literally make or break for the build but in terms of a center build or a lockdown build those builds are a lot more low risk builds and if you plan on making one of each, I would start with the low risk build. Bonus tip, NBA2KLab.com has tons of free information that will help you create the perfect build to fit how you want to play. Everything from badge requirements, they'll have animation requirements, they'll have everything you need 
for free. Need an animation the requirement. Laptop. The link will be in the description. Of course, they also have the premium side of the content that has all the jump shot data that all the best players in the world need access to if they want to be competing at the highest level. If you want access to the premium content, make sure you use code Joe. That'll get you a big discount and help you be the best 2K24 player you can possibly be. The next one is understand what each attribute actually does, okay? So for example, if you're new to 2K, you probably think, well, I'm upgrading acceleration. That's going to change how fast my player reaches top speed when I'm running on the fast break. But as more experienced 2K players know, acceleration only affects your first step when you have the ball in your hands. What? what affects how fast you run up and down the court is your speed. So, if, for example, for anyone that doesn't know, if you have a 90 speed and I have a 90 speed, but I have 90 acceleration and you only have 50 acceleration, if neither of us have the ball and we both start on the baseline and we run to the other... Oh. All right, had to, uh, had to uh, pause real quick. I'm back, though. He's going to re rewind that. Acceleration. If neither of us have the ball and we both start on the baseline and we run to the other baseline, we will both get there at the same time. Okay. But logically, you would think the player with the higher excel would reach top speed quicker, thus getting to the other baseline quicker. That's not how 2K works. Acceleration only affects when you have the ball in your hands. And there's other attributes like that. So what I'm saying is... make. So if acceleration affects the balls in your hands... What is the point of speed with ball? This is confusing, man. You do a little research, find out exactly what each attribute actually affects before you start pumping up attributes that your type of build doesn't even need. Okay, where can I find that at? Find out what each attribute actually does. Like, I know, of course, three-point shot and stuff like that. Right, do a little research. It'll help you out in the long run. Number four, pay attention to when you're selecting your physicals on your player and what i mean by physicals is height weight and wingspan as you change your height weight and wingspan in this year's builder you'll see over on the side there it actually shows you what badges now your build potentially can unlock depending on where you put your attributes of course but it's nice to know that you know by putting up my build by maybe one tick of wingspan or maybe by putting them up even just one pound now instead of unlocking a badge at silver i get it on gold or un not unlocking a badge at all now i can get it on bronze you can see it just off of what your physical selections are so pay attention to that this year that's going to be a key in terms of not missing out on badges and not missing out on badge levels that your build potentially could have had but you just didn't even pay attention to what you're doing on your physicals physicals affect badges more than ever and they're allowing you to see exactly what badges are affected when you change your physical so make sure you pay attention to that once you get into that NBA. they don't even have the badge descriptions bro like what if you don't know every logo so you're trying to make your build and you're like, of course, I know this right here down here where my mouse is brick wall. But like some of these new badges, I don't know what's the name or what do they do, bro. Like you need to make, put the name of the badge, bro. So I know what I'm getting myself the into. Give your build time before you judge it. I've seen people waste hundreds of dollars of VC. They create a build. They don't give themselves time to max out their badges or max out their attributes. Hey. You know, you're an, a 90 overall with a few badges running around the park. You're getting cooked and you're like, this build's trash. I'm making a new one. I've played on builds that I've created myself, and I knew until I get this build to 99, it's not going to be quote unquote like top level build material. I gotta unlock all the attributes, I've gotta max out all the badges, I gotta do what I gotta do before the build will really feel like what I envisioned. So give us some time. Don't throw away a couple hundred dollars into a build just because you didn't even put the time in to get the build maxed out. I've seen mm. people do it, I've probably done it myself in the past. But a lot of times, a build that you create, especially a very nuanced build, Slam can everything for the build to come together and really feel good. Now, there's other builds that, you know, even at an 85, you know, a big center, you know, you get the job done. But even those builds, maxed out, they're going to feel a lot better than when you first start out. So give it time, max the build out, and then judge the build before you just throw a bunch of money into the dumpster. Number six, create your build to fit your play style. I don't care how many YouTube videos you watch, how many streamers you listen to, use those build videos and those streamers' opinions to help you, right, take that information in, but to mold the build around how you want to play, right? If I were to go out there and create some 99 three-pointer, three-hunting guard build that would be really good for another player, it wouldn't fit me because that's just not really how I play the game naturally. You gotta, you gotta tweak these builds 
to fit the way you want to play, Damn. right? That's the only way you're really going to enjoy your build and have success on it. You, taking somebody else's best build is not going to be your best build. You need to take all that information from all the build videos and all the, like I said, streamers' opinions, take all that information into your head to help you mold the perfect build to fit your playstyle. The next one, keep the new badge system in mind, okay? When you're creating your build, now the tiers are not like how they used to be, right? You don't need a certain amount of badge upgrades to unlock a build. For example, you could only have one category up in defense. Let's say you just put 93 perimeter defense, right? Mm -hmm. Before, to get gold clamps and gold challenger and all these other elite defensive badges, you would have to put up other defensive attributes to unlock badge upgrades, but that's not how it works anymore. Even if a badge is quote unquote S tier or A tier, you don't need badge upgrades to unlock those. You have all the badges your build is potentially able to have. So don't be getting confused thinking in the past, you know, uh, you know, I got to get my core badges and my tier threes. I got to put 10 badge upgrades into tier one and tier two. It doesn't work like that. Anymore, Thank God. Right? So you can that was trash. More pick and choose of where you put your attributes. Because any badge that your build potentially unlocks, you will have that badge. You don't have to spread out badge upgrades like you used to. So don't create your build thinking in the 2K23 builder system, this is 2K24, there's no badge upgrades to be unlocked. Whatever badges your build gets, you will have. Next one, create your build to fit not only the game modes that you play, but the teammates that you plan on playing with. Now, if you plan on playing with randoms, that's kind of tough on the second one, but definitely the game mode one you can still follow, you know? A build that's good on the ones court is very different than a build that's good in 5v5, right? On the ones court, you don't even need pass accuracy on your build. You know, that's just one example. Also, you know, if you plan on playing twos or threes or, you know, rec versus comp pro amp, you know, create your build specific for the game mode you plan to use it in. Obviously, some people play multiple game modes, so you can kind of balance it across the few, but you, you get what I'm saying. You gotta base it off of what you plan on playing and also in terms of who you plan on playing with. So for example, myself, I might make my first guard build with just no defense. I might just go all offense, but I can get away with that because my teammates I play with, they prefer to make defensive builds, right? I'm gonna have a lockdown with me. I'm gonna have like a tall defensive minded popping center with me. Mm. So I can get away with that because they can cover for my weaknesses. But if my teammates were all making all offense, no defense builds, I might need to be the one to say, okay, I'll create the defensive build. I'll be the guy to get the stops, get the rebounds, all that. So you got to work your builds around not only who you play with, but the game mode that you plan on playing. Number nine, take your time in the builder. The builder is very different, very complicated, very more limited in terms of what attributes you can get on your builds. It's going to take some time to adjust to. Do not rush into making a build, put you know, $100, $200 into a build, and then end up hating it because you rushed and you spent 10 minutes in the builder. Take your time in that builder. Really try to figure it out. Watch videos if you don't understand how something works. Get people's opinions before you invest hundreds of dollars into a build that you're gonna hate and then you're gonna end up having to reinvest more money. You know, unless you, hey, if you got it like that, you got it like that. But I know a lot of people, you know what I mean? They're not trying to throw away $100 on a, uh, you know, $100 on a build they don't even like. So take your time in that build to really figure out what you're trying to create. Play with the attributes, play with the physical, see what badges you can get, all that stuff. Take your time in there and it will pay off in the end. Last but not least, whatever build you end up making, make sure it's a build that you're going to enjoy. Even if you make the quote unquote best build, best whatever. Oh, thanks for stating the obvious, Joe. Build, if it's a build you're not gonna have fun playing on, you're not going to like the build. It's gotta, like I said, fit your play style, fit your game mode, fit playing with your teammates. It's gotta be a good build that you can actually have success on, but also it's gotta be a build that you like playing. If you like to dunk the ball, don't create a build to shoot threes. You're gonna get bored of that very quickly. If you like to defend and rebound and play in the paint, don't create a stretch big that needs to play on the perimeter. Y'all get what I'm saying. Create a build that fits how you wanna play the game so that you enjoy NBA 2K24. If you're looking for a complete NBA 2K24 by Alrighty, player Alrighty, thanks Joe Nose for the useful information, man. I'm definitely going to take that into um, consideration, man. I'm excited for this game. If you're excited for this game, smash that like button in the comments and tell me what build y'all making. Uh, catch y'all in the next one, man. I'm out.